Well, it has been uh, a pretty pretty packed first quarter, and considering April uh, is is readathon month, where I'll be reading quite a lot of stuff as well. Uh, there's there's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see where all of this stuff shakes out at year end. But it's time to talk about my top ten bucks of the first quarter. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are doing my top ten books of the first quarter of the year, and there's some pretty good competition. And there's a, I mean, there's a lot more to come here too. So, uh, with no further ado, let's jump in and talk about the the top ten. So, there were definitely some of these uh, as normal when I do these. That like, there's a whole the middle section. I'm just like, ah, I don't really know where to put these. So, um, suffice it to say, these are all great books that I would recommend checking out. Uh, and the order is somewhat arbitrary because I just am like, I'm just going to put it and not not agonize over the order here because um, it'll be off to do that anyway, top 10 of the year uh, as we go. So starting with number 10, we have Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Uh, and this was uh, just such an interesting one. This is one that I probably will revisit this first book because it is so short uh, and, and do a reread of it as well because I was I was still in a kind of a book hangover and I just needed something totally different, which this worked really well. But I really liked it. This was just a weird uh, sci-fi type of novel. And it just, uh, it was such an interesting world and everything we were exploring. So I had a really great time with this. Uh, so that was enough to land it at number 10. I will definitely be uh, working on continuing that series as well. Uh, it is a, a trilogy, and I think there's supposed to be more eventually as well. Um, so yeah, so I'll be checking out the next books as well. Uh, but I originally uh, did that. That'll be in a book haul too, because uh, I originally read it from my library, but then got a copy because I happened to see it out. So yeah, we had that. Uh, and then number nine, uh, we have, and I have this one. Uh, I'm not counting the whole book, but if I'm... Yeah, I didn't read the whole book this in the first quarter, so I probably can't count that because I'm like, that would have been a technicality. But uh, Black Powder War, book three here, is what I was counting as number nine of this uh, this bind up of Temeraire. And uh, I, I still, um, and I talked about when I did a video talking about the first three, book one was still my favorite. I love book one. Uh, and I, I liked book two, and I, book three I thought uh, was a little bit uh, better as well. Uh, it just, Black Powder War had a lot of strong things it did. It still had some of the travel, which... Eh, but it started really exploring a lot more elements and uh, opening things up for, I think, the bigger picture things that we're going to be looking at with uh, the, the situation of dragons and how they fit into society. So a lot of interesting stuff. And we did go back and actually get some of the, the uh, Napoleonic War elements and, and fighting and, and those kinds of things, too. Uh, so overall, it brought back some of the things I really liked uh, and is something that I definitely enjoyed. Uh, but yeah, it's the, the first book is still the one that was, was definitely the highest for me. Uh, and then coming in at number eight, we have one that was a, a, a surprise for me, but one I, I really did enjoy, The Magic of Recluse by L.E. Bodicet Jr. Um, this is the first book in the Recluse saga. I did do the first two, uh, but this one I liked a little bit more than the second one. It's just is an interesting book uh, and one that it took me a while to get into and to kind of figure out what we are doing here. Uh, but just overall, it's it's one that is so focused on, on world building uh, and just was something that I just had a really great time reading. And so I uh, definitely ended up here as well. Recluse is another one. I will be continuing the series as well and, and trying to um, continue on and, and see uh, there as well. But it'll be uh, it'll definitely be interesting to see. I should mention as well that everything, pretty much everything on this list, at least, uh, should have a, a standalone review. So if, if you if you want to know more, you can definitely look those up. Most things do. Not maybe not everything, but just about everything here does. So should mention that as well. But yeah, so a really interesting world building focused thing with uh, some interesting characters and just elements that I, I thought were were a really nice read. Uh, is where we get that one. All right, and then coming in at number seven, we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which was another uh, kind of a fun surprise here with it. And this is one where I felt like, I, I'm not counting this as a reread, because just for the record, I've also been uh, rereading Crown of Stars. Uh, and so those would have definitely placed here uh, had they not been rereads, but I don't typically include rereads. This is one where I feel like I may have read it when I was like a child and had almost no recollection of it whatsoever. So I'm, I'm counting this as a first time read. Um, but yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed this. This was, I did do, I did two classics, and this is the one I really liked. I really didn't like the other one, uh, but it just was, it was an interesting time, and it was not what I was expecting. A lot more like weird family genre, and uh, just other stuff coming on like that, but I just, I had a really, uh, really good time with that one, so I decided to put that one out uh, at, at number seven. And then moving into number six, and this is where it did get really hard, and I'm just not gonna like, so I'm not gonna question my order. This is just kind of where I, 
I decided to put stuff, and that's that's where it is going to stick. Uh, but that is The City of Marble and Blood by Howard Andrew Jones, book two in the Hanuvar Chronicles, uh, or the, the Hanuvid, and uh, I, uh, another one where I just had a really good time with. I also still absolutely love this art. Uh, I, I absolutely love the first book. Lord of a Shadowland was one of my favorite books uh, that I read last year, and um, I, I, I definitely recommend checking it out as well. And this was still a really strong book. Uh, I liked uh, some of the elements that were done that were focused a little bit more on in uh, Lord of Shattered Land because it was doing a little bit more of the episodic thing where this is now really building into the bigger picture plot, uh, which I still really enjoyed as well. But just honestly, a, a quite an excellent book uh, and one that I, I, I really had a great time with as well. Really, really good sword and sorcery, sword and sandals kind of thing uh, with just fantastic characters and uh, really, really enjoyable read as well. So another, another really great one there here too. Then we have at... Number five, The Last of the Atalanteans uh, by P.L. Stewart here. And uh, this one, too, is, is another one. This is book two, uh, so also book two in a series, yeah, uh, in the Drowned Kingdom saga. And one that I, uh, it took me a little bit to get into, but just finished so, so strong uh, here with it. Also where it's really starting to build up, I think, to the, the bigger picture with a lot more to come here. Uh, and one I just, I, I really enjoyed all of the different character moments in the second half, as well as the just amazingly written battle sequences. as well. Uh, something actually both of these have in common. They, they fit very uh, closely here uh, with it, uh, even though they're really different in style, uh, but some of the things that I really enjoyed about them here. So a lot of, a lot of great stuff, and another one I am looking forward to continuing. That one, uh, the next, I think the next two books are out at this point as well. So the, the Hanover books I know are still ongoing, but they've been uh, being released uh, pretty frequently as well. So more to continue there as well. Getting us into the back half. We next up have That Way Lies Camelot by Jenny Wirtz, uh, which is a, a short story collection here. And I debated on where to put this uh, because it is a short story collection. And so like, do you know, does it belong above this or below that or where? But uh, I had a really great time with this. And so it's Jenny Wirtz. So I know it's not really a surprise that I had a really great time with it, but um, I enjoyed my experience through here, but then just the last story itself was just so good that it's just like, I can't help but have really, really enjoyed this. Definitely something uh, that I'll, I'll revisit, I think, over time as well with a lot of these stories, and especially just that last story, which is That Way Lies Camelot, which was not what I was expecting at all, and was just a, a phenomenal and uh, just heartbreaking story, and was, was really good. So decided to put it there in the, in the five spot uh, there. So going up then to, uh, wait, that's not... Five. I've just determined that I can actually count here. As an aside, I realized that I only had nine books when I started filming this, and I had to find which one was supposed to be that's <laughs> missing. So uh, that way, last Camelot is number four. Uh, it's moving on. Then we are on, we're in uh, number three now. So number three. Uh, which I went ahead with uh, Desperate Dispatches by Mike Mullen. Uh, this is the fourth book in the Protectors of Britanni series, and this is one of the... Uh, it, every other book is focusing on different characters and multi-POVs uh, versus Grami that the uh, like kind of the mainline does, and I know he's changed the format a little bit. This was just... had all the elements that I, I really have enjoyed about this series, but just uh, exploring even more. I talked about just all kinds of great fantasy goodness with dragons and dwarves and elementals and demon summoning, all kinds of stuff going on. I'm also a little bit biased because, uh, you know, somebody, somebody you know might appear in this book. So, uh, I just, I had so much fun, especially getting to that part as well. And so, uh, I couldn't, uh, I, I just, uh, I had a really great time, so I decided that one was going to go up here to number three. That's right, I can count, uh, despite what you may have witnessed in this video so far. It's going to be really fun to edit. Um, <laughs> coming in at number two, I decided to go with Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett, uh, which is one of the Discworld novels, and uh, this is just another one, too, where I've uh, I've really enjoyed uh, Discworld as I've gotten further and further in, and Feet of Clay was the first one I had read in a while, and I just had a really, really great time with this. It was just a really fantastic addition to the, the Discworld and Night Watch in general, and uh, was, I think when I read it too, it was just a really good time for it. I have a lot of really big ones uh, that you hear about coming out, because I think my next one is Hogfather, and I don't know when I'm going to get to it specifically. Um, but yeah, it's just, I've gotten, I'm about... I'm nearly halfway through Discworld, I think, and so it's just, I'm at the point where the the thing, the writing, everything, it's just, everything is so really good and set that it's just, uh, I, I'm not really having hit or miss books as much anymore, I've just really been enjoying them, so I'm hoping that that continues, uh, but that's, that's where we've landed on the number two slot. Now, the number one slot, I feel like, is probably not a surprise, 
uh, at all. Um, but yeah, uh, Song of the Mysteries uh, by Jenny Wirtz, the final book in the Wars of Light and Shadow. I'm so happy that I have, I had a, a, a review copy that she sent me uh, that was paperback that I sent along to uh, somebody else after I was done with it. But now I have the official arc, uh, which actually ended up being a hardcover, which I wasn't expecting either. Uh, so beautiful, beautiful book. Uh, this one is, I, even though it's not out yet, uh, I did read it in the first quarter, and uh, there's there's no contest here uh, with this being my favorite book of the first quarter. So good. The final book of the series, just absolutely, absolutely amazing, and I, I definitely recommend you check it out. This is available for pre-order now, uh, as well as the first book, Curse of the Mystery, is available uh, for audiobook pre-order. It's coming out in an audiobook uh, here really shortly in April. Uh, so I'm trying to remember the exact date, but it should be out really, really soon, I think. Uh, so yeah, so definitely uh, more to go there. But probably not a surprise if you've seen me talk about uh, the series and everything. It is my favorite series. Uh, and I just uh, I loved it so much. I love the book. And I'm actually very likely going to read it again uh, before it even actually officially comes out now that I have a copy again because I don't know if I can resist. So uh, we'll see there. But there you have it. Those are my top 10 books of the first quarter. Uh, let me know your thoughts on any of these. If there are any you would put in a different order or what your uh, some of your top books of the quarter were. There's a lot here. Like I said, usually when I'm doing these, it's so hard to, to rank things because there's a lot of books that I just really enjoyed. Um, and so this is kind of where we, we, we landed with these. A lot of good stuff. And I, I've already read some great stuff uh, into second quarter. Uh, that I know will be in competition there, so we'll we'll see where that all ends up. But that is it for this one. Um, like I said, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to check the link in the description, as always, for the Wizard of the Enclave Discord. If you want to chat books, whether any of these books, other books, really anything at all, it's a lot of fun, and we'd love to have you. And, of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe.